Hey everyone, and welcome back to Let's Create. So before I begin, I'm just going to go ahead and quickly apologize to those that were excited for the next video. I am sadly had my charger die on me for my laptop. Ignoring the fact that I work from a laptop might be a problem to some of you. That caused the issue that I couldn't really make videos. I could make games still, and I actually participated in indie in the tag jam during that time, which was fun. But uh, I couldn't really make videos, and I'm so sorry I took so long to get this out. But I'm recording this late at night right now. It's uh, like almost 2 a.m. Some of you that might be perfect prime time. For me, I am dead. But it's all right because I gotta do this. I'm gonna get this out to you ASAP, and I hope that you enjoy it. All right, so let's get started. Today we're gonna be talking about tweening. Now, tweening is the act of making tricking your eyes into believing something is smoother than it is by, in our case, use of mathematical equations, funnily enough. It's a pretty simple equation, and where I first learned this, and I'm going to go ahead and recommend that video to you because after figuring it out more, it's it's where I learned it, so go ahead and check out Touch GML, um, and there's a specific video he has, I'm linking to it right now with annotations, what is going on, ladies where ladies he talks about GML, tweening and he talks about how it can be used for camera movement. We're actually going to be implementing that same code in here, so thanks to him for this code, even though it is uh, using a lot of base GML stuff, I wouldn't have known it without him. Anyways, let's get started. So, before we begin, I have created one new variable, which we'll be using throughout this, in create event of player, and it's just called cam face. So go ahead and create a variable in there in your create event for the player and call it cam face equals zero. Just gonna give you that heads up. Alright, and now go into step event. And what we're gonna be doing now is from the last tutorial, we created our player movement, we set our controls, we set our collisions, all of that. But we didn't really have it be all that smooth, we didn't have all that nice, there was no camera, all this stuff that we just don't have. And we're gonna try and do that today. So First thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to talk about what tweening is, and I'm going to talk about how we can implement it in our game. So right now, if the player wanted to stop, for example, they let go of the key, right? Because we have this that says if it's not pressing Q left or right, or if it's pressing both at the same time, and we're touching the ground, then his but just instantly equals zero. They will stop immediately. Now stopping pretty fast is definitely good in a platformer, you want that kind of control but immediately doesn't exactly feel normal, it doesn't feel right, it's a little bit too fast. So tweening, with tweening, we can fix that, we can actually smooth it out quite a bit. And we're going to do that, but first I'm going to just tell you what the tweening algorithm is. Algorithm is kind of a bigger word for it than it should be, but hard to get things you weren't out of your head. So tweening, in simplification, is var1 plus equals target minus var1 times var2. Now to break that down even further, where var1 equals the variable we are changing, where target equals a store where you buy many gifts uh, that are all pretty crappy because I'm Canadian. Uh, actually, no. It equals the point at which we wish var1 to stop changing. And then we have where var2 equals the rate of change. So simply what we're saying here is that var1 is going to be adding to the total of itself with everything that's in this equation. Now, how bed mass works in math is that it starts with the brackets and does what goes outside. So it's going to figure out whatever this is. So if our target, let's say our target is 0 and our var1 is 2. Alright, so that means that this is going to come up with negative 2. Now then that times by, zero, by uh, var2. Var2 could be equal to, for simplicity in my mind, I'm going to say 0 0.1. So what that means what that would mean is that I believe 0 0.1 times negative 2 would be negative 0 
So we end up coming out with var1 plus equals negative 0 0.2. Undo those changes just for the sake of the fact that I ruined all my notes for that. Yay computers for the undo button. Such a genius decision. So that's how it works, is that at the closer we get to our target, the slower it's going to change. And that's how we smoothly sort of, eight, sort of edge ourselves out of it. So let's give that a try now. Right now we stop instantly, right? Let's go ahead and let's make that a little bit different. We're going to say hispa. So hispa in our case is our var1 plus equals zero because that's where we want to you know we want to stop moving minus hispa and then a constant is usually in our case for this uh, slowing down will be a decimal value uh, in the zero range. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna say 0 0.1 because I think that's a pretty decent rate of change for a platformer might play around with it more. And go ahead and just... I'm gonna do one other thing. I'm gonna create an object. You can follow around if you want with this, but this is sort of me just trying to show you more information. So I'm gonna create an object controller. I'm gonna add a draw event for it. And in here, we're gonna write draw text. So we're just making it draw text on the screen. I'm gonna say object player dot x uh, minus 8 object player dot y minus 16 string and object player dot hispa so what we basically just said if you're interested in this is we're drawing text on the screen uh, that will be constantly updating at the coordinates of wherever the player is minus 8 pixels wherever the player is on the y minus 16 pixels and using a variable from object player being hispa. And let's go ahead, toss that in our room and go give it a run. And now what this will do is, as you can see, we got our hispa displaying just above our player's head. And as we move to the right and left, it's changing perfectly. Now if I ease out of it, if I let go of the key, watch the variable change. As we get closer to zero, it slows down quite a bit. Holy shit, my pants to Australia! That wasn't funny. Now it's very easy to get your eyes locked on that number, but see if you can just look at the player and see how he's sort of smoothing out of it. And to help with that, I'm actually going to go ahead, I'll comment out this code. And now you can go ahead and give a look. See how the player sort of smooths out of it, so now you don't have those numbers to stare at. It's the same code, nothing's changed, but now you can actually look and sort of feel that very gentle ease that's almost unnoticeable, but it is really nice. It's that nice touch. Alright, so we can actually do this a little bit further. We can do this with views. Go into the room, go into the views tab. And we're going to set a few things. First of all, just enable uses views and visible when room starts. View in the room, go ahead and set the width to half size. And the height to half size. So wherever your port on screen is, just half it. And then just set it to object player following. Now the reason we do this is that we don't do this if you don't care about what the player sees outside the room. Sometimes you actually want the player to see what's outside the room. There are times when that's actually acceptable. In our case though, we don't want the player to be able to go and see what's out here, what's out here, which is just gonna end up being the same gray as this background. So we're setting it to object player following because that is the simplest and quickest way to prevent it from doing that. Now go into object player, go into the step event again, and at the bottom here, we're going to go ahead and we're going to write a camera. We're going to call it Smart Cam. Alright, so Smart Cam, otherwise known as SC, my man, my main brother. Alright, getting really, really tired of my own shit, Tony. Okay, so we're going to write view underscore x view, zero, because that's the one we're changing, plus equals x, so that's where our speed is right now because speed x is equal to hispa minus 
view underscore w view, so this is the width of the room, divided by 2, so we're always going to be in the center. And we're going to do minus view underscore x view 0 again, so again we have that rate of change. And then 0 0.1 I'll do, because that is... Well, no, I'll do 0 0.05, because I think that that will be a nice smooth motion. And for now that's all we need, so let's go ahead and run it. And the view in the room is enabled, and if you check it out, fairly smooth. It doesn't really jerk to the player, it just kind of slowly eases itself in and out, right? That's what we want. That is the feeling we want. Now one last thing we can do, and this is where cam face from the beginning of the video comes in. If you go into key left or key right, go ahead and add cam face equals negative 64 for key left. make it 64 for key right, and when not pressing those two keys, make it, not 64, make it 0. And now in this equation, we're going to modify it a tiny bit more, add another bracket around that. So now we've got so many, which is why I spaced it out so nicely, so I can understand it, and just add plus can face to this. So let's go into as bedmass rules, figure out what the, oh, I fucked with that by accident. It's going to figure out what the width of the view is, divided by 2. It's then going to subtract, it's going to take whatever our x is and minus, we don't take our view first, but it can do either, apparently. Bed mass can be confusing to even me. Anyways, going to do these two subtractions, and then it makes it way out of that, and then adds 64 pixels. And then, out of all of that, it then does the tween, the rate of change. Now, with that set, if you check the camera again, we have what I would like to call sort of a prototype smart cam. If we move to the left and right, the camera is going to jerk a tiny bit, and the rate of change will change that. But, as you can see, it does show what's ahead of us, which is really, really useful. If we can see what's ahead of us, then suddenly in a platform we have a better idea of what's coming, what's approaching, and being able to change that on a dime is not something you can do as easily with base game maker commands. So this tween now is a smoother way to do it, and it also still looks really, really nice. Alright, so that's everything that we've got to do today. Go ahead and play around with tweening, try out your own ideas, see what you can do and make up. And I will see you next time to move on to the next part of Let's Create a Mario Style Platformer. See you then, and hopefully it'll only be a few days this time. <laughs>